Welcome to I Know Jacks, the local weekly show where we talk about everything local, but mostly about things that involve food, drinks, and fun. This week we're going to talk about everything from craft beer to nature to upcoming events because this is I Know Jacks, and our motto is eat local, drink local, and be local. I love our area, especially in the summer. To me, there's no better place to be, and obviously there are lots of people visiting our area too, so I'm not wrong. We're on the coast, and almost no matter what part of town you live in, you're not far from water. But here is something scary that is right now threatening our waters. This is a lionfish. Beautiful, right? First time I ever saw one was in an aquarium, and that's where they belong if you're here in Florida because now this invasive species is wreaking havoc in the ocean. How do they get here? Maybe aquarium fish were released and released pets rarely survive and adapt in the wild, but when they do, it's bad news. Just think about the pythons in South Florida, for example. The lionfish thrives in our oceans. There's plenty of food and they have no natural enemies. They out eat all the other native species and outcompete the other native species and they are overtaking the deep reefs quickly. One way to control the rapidly growing lionfish population is to make us humans lionfish predators. That's what we're doing today. We left Mayport early in the morning and headed out into the ocean about 35 nautical miles from shore. Lionfish don't tend to bite hooks and live in reefs and places that can't be fished with large nets. So to catch them, you have to get in the water and spear them one by one. The best place to find lionfish is 100 feet down, which means you need to dive and dive pretty deep. Dive, dive, dive. Rob and the other divers jump in for their first dive. They have a spear and a long tube to put their catch in. This tube is called a zookeeper. When lionfish arrive on a reef, they reduce native fish populations by nearly 70%. They are aggressive eaters. They'll eat almost anything. They can go for days without eating, but in our coastal waters, they don't need to. Instead, they eat so much that they even get fat. It's not difficult for the divers to locate the lionfish. There are so many of them. But for commercial fishing, spearing fish one by one is not really efficient. The divers made several dives during the day. Sand, we're going to about 60 feet. Yeah. Last spot I found some big ones though. Some little isolated coral head. The fish are cleaned on the boat and the venomous spikes are cut off. The venom is in the spikes on the fins, not in the meat itself. Lionfish are known for their venomous fin rays, an uncommon feature among marine fish in the East Coast coral reefs. This sting isn't deadly, but it hurts. Since the venom is removed, there's no venom in the flesh. Many hope to establish a food fishery to increase the fishing pressure on these ravenous invaders but there are many obstacles. Fishing lionfish is complicated and costly. Meanwhile, the lionfish thrives in our waters, threatening native fishes with their voracious appetites and unchecked population growth. Rob and his crew are doing their best to help keep the lionfish population on the first coast in check. When I hear about things that threaten our waters like toxic blue algae or lionfish, it feels completely overwhelming because there are no really simple solutions. Now when it comes to lionfish, we support the efforts to fish for them. And by the way, if you want to try lionfish, I know that Whole Foods carry it, carries it, so you might want to check that out. Now I've eaten lionfish and I can say it's very tasty. Hey and welcome to What's Brewing in Jacks. Every week I take a look at what's happening in the craft beer scene in the Jacksonville area. I'm at Really Good Beer Stop on 3rd Street in Jacks Beach and today I'm having a sour rosé from Cricket Stave. And if you watch this video, you'll find out how you can get a free pint of beer. Now I know you like local beers and here's an event that you don't want to miss. 
For the second year, Really, really Good Beer Stop is hosting Boyd's Tap Takeover, and here's what's happening. They've partnered with local breweries to create a distinctive flight of beers. Five local breweries are participating during two nights. On Thursday, it's Ruby Beach and Bog Brewing Company, and on Friday, it's Hyperion, Southern Swells, and Ancient City. Void Tap Takeover takes place July 26th and 27th, starting at 6 p.m. On Thursday, it's also Cigar City Brewery Night at Really Good Beer Stop, so come out for some great beers, swag, and more. That's on Thursday, July 26th. On Saturday, July 28th, Wicked Barley is having a big party. It's their second anniversary and that calls for a big celebration. This is an all day indoor outdoor bash with live music, food and extra tasty Wicked Barley beers. That's what they're saying anyway. Our friends from Bee Friends Farm are going to be there from 11 to 2 p.m. with samples of their local honey. That's really tasty stuff. Another thing that caught my eye was the summer shandy bar in the beer garden. They'll have blood orange, lemonade, and much more, and it's gonna be perfect for a hot day. That's the second anniversary party taking place at Wicked Barley, Saturday, July 28th, from 11 to 11. Happy birthday to Happy you. Happy birthday to you. Earlier, I promised to let you know how you can get a free pint of beer right here at Really Good Beer Stop, and it's simple. Just stop by this week and check out the selection and pick something that you like. And when you order, just say Hazy IPA and your first pint is free. Not a bad deal, right? That's it for this time. Now, if you want to try a Sour Rosé from Crooked Stave, hurry to Really Good Beer Stop. They have a great selection of craft beer and cans, and they have 20 beers on tap that they rotate all the time, so there's always something new. See you here. Cheers. Jacksonville Beach's ultimate craft beer and growler store. Now recently I went to visit a nonprofit organization here in town that rescues food. Check this out. Waste Not One Not is a food rescue organization. It's volunteer driven. Our volunteers rescue food from stores, restaurants, farmers fields, neighbors citrus trees. We consolidate it here at Waste Not One Not and we provide it to other nonprofits in 10 counties that are serving the needy. Whether they're food pantries, soup kitchens, missions, group homes, things like that. That's how we try and put good food to good use. So our mission is twofold. It's to prevent the waste of items that can be used to fight hunger and poverty. So if something is going to be wasted, we try and rescue it if we have somebody that we can give it to that can use it. So any kind of food that can be put to good use, we try and rescue. We send our volunteers out on rescues, as we call them. That is a term of art. They go to the stores and they pick up whatever's being donated and bring it to us so that we can share it with others. So um, we serve group homes for challenged individuals, group homes for uh, recovering alcoholics, for prisoners who finish their time in jail. We serve food pantries of all sizes and shapes, soup kitchens, uh, missions, and day centers as well. We also do some weekend backpack programs and other things um, to help children that are lacking in food, both in school, after school, and on the weekends. In 2005, we incorporated as a standalone non-for-profit. We are standalone, just like any other nonprofit, 501c3. And um, we moved into our current location in 2008. And last year, for the first time, we rescued more than 2 million pounds of food in a single year. So 2.2, wow. actually. For every dollar that we spent last year, we were able to provide 14 pounds of food to those in need. So every little bit counts, no matter how little or how much you have to donate, we would be most grateful. It amazes me how much food is going to waste every day. I'm so glad to see that there are organizations like Waste Not Want Not that are making an impact and changing lives. We're in the middle of the summer and usually that means that things slow down a bit when it comes to festivals and events, but even so, I have a pretty packed list of events this week. Now as you might know, it's Shark Week this week. Besides watching shark shows on TV, there are a few local shark happenings too. The St. Augustine Aquarium is hosting Shark Week with daily sharks featured with guest speakers and crafts for the youth. General admission to the aquarium for adults is eight and youth is five. The aquarium is open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's Shark Week at the St. Augustine Aquarium. In St. Augustine, there's a free movie screening in Colonial Park on July 25th. And this time the movie is Justice League. The movie begins at 8.30 p.m. Bring your own chairs or a blanket. That's in the Colonial Park on Wednesday, July 25th. 
There's also a free concert in St. Augustine on Thursday when it's Concerts in the Plaza. The band is called Sandals and will be performing at 7 p.m. It's Shark Week all week, so of course the Jacksonville Sharks are playing at home and there might be blood in the water when they face the Massachusetts Pirates at Veterans Memorial Arena. The theme for the evening is not Shark Week, it's 80s Night and Fan Appreciation. That's on Saturday, July 28th. It'll be a busy Saturday in that area because the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp are also playing at home this week. Many families love to go out to the ballpark, watch a game, and the fireworks. The Jacksonville Shrimp are facing Montgomery. That's July 23rd through 27th. Even though it is Shark Week, the Void Pro-Am Surf Contest is going to take place on the south side of the pier in Jack's Beach. That's on Saturday, July 28th. There's more action on Saturday because the Jacksonville Axemen, our professional rugby team, are playing at home. That's at UNF on Saturday, July 28th, and the game starts at 6 p.m. And by the way, if you want to go and check out the action, go to the game and say, I know Jack sent me and your ticket is free. Now, if you can't make it to UNF in person, we will be live streaming it on our I Know Jack's Facebook page. So tune in. Nowadays, they come up with all kinds of ideas to try to make me run. And here is one that actually made me consider it. <laughs> it's called the Red, White, and Blue Freedom and Beer Run. It's a 5K, and to me, that's a long way to run. But this one is held in the evening at Riverside Arts Market. And here's the kicker. They have both beer stations and bacon stations on this run. So will the smell of bacon make you run faster? Who knows? Now, if it was a bicycle race, I'd be all in. And right after the race, they will be having a big food truck rally at Riverside Arts Market with over 15 trucks. That takes place from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. To find more fun things to do, go to iknowjacks.com and check out my post with a clever little name, Fun Things to Do in July. This summer, we're working on a lot of interesting projects for I Know Jax. I'm getting ready to start doing online videos a couple of times a week. Right now, I'm releasing What's Brewing in Jax and our calendar in the beginning of the week, and then we're uploading the episode online over the weekend. This means that you can watch I Know Jax episodes on my website in case you miss it here on TV. It also means that I'm going to do a lot more stories and a lot more interviews going forward. So if you have suggestions or ideas for me, please feel free to send me an email. Caddyshack gives a safe, loving, forever home to endangered big cats like tigers, lions, and others. Daytime tours are every Thursday, 1 to 4 p.m. Night fittings are every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Visit caddyshack.org for details and to purchase tickets in advance. I think I went to my first rugby game about 10 years ago and I've been going regularly ever since. We actually have our own professional rugby team here in Jacksonville, the Jacksonville Axemen. I met their head coach at Colhane's Irish Pub for a chat. For fans that are looking to come out to their first rugby game, what would you uh, like them to experience? Um, well, plenty of, oh, would you call it fast-paced action, 
uh, close to the sidelines. You can actually hear the hits, you can hear the players talking and yelling and screaming at each other and, um, and it's good continuous play. There's no real rest, you know? Yeah. It's just uh, good action, no pads, plenty of contact, plenty of aggression. Three dollar beers <laughs> in the sun. Bad, right? <laughs> I, I can't think of anything more. Well, do what? It goes for an hour and a half a game. Forty minutes each way. You're in, see some action, and you're out. And we're time for dinner. How would you compare rugby league to say American football? Um, has a few similarities, and obviously a whole heap of differences. First one is uh, no pads, no helmets, and. Um, the other one is, is that uh, all our passing has to be backwards. We can't throw it forward okay. and there's no blocking or anything like that. So uh, you get six downs and you've got a punt and it's kind of like rush offense. So after you get tackled, uh, the defensive team has to retreat 10 meters before you take the next, we call it a play the ball, but it's uh, the next snap. Gotcha. And our, our quarterback will shift the ball on. So it's just working your way down the field, and after six, if you get caught with a ball, it's a changeover, same as in football. After the game, both teams go to the same place and celebrate, and it seems like everybody's all buddy-buddy. Well, so uh, what is that? What's well, that all about? Yeah, it might seem a bit weird, but um, yeah, that's, that's what we do. You, you got to support, each club supports each other, so you gotta, we've got our sponsors, and they come back to our place, and they'll buy us some drinks and everything just to help support our team, and, and we do the same at their joint. Because we've also got a fair bit of distance to travel, it's good for them to come back and have a feed before they have to take off. And um, and, and and that's it is kind of a bit weird. You get on the field and everyone's into each other, and then afterwards everyone shakes hands and it's a bit of camaraderie and everyone uh, appreciates everyone's effort, I suppose. This is the 13th season for the team as a professional team here in Jacksonville. Won two championships. You think you're on your on track for making it a third this year? Well, we're we're on track for what we're trying to do. We've still got, even though we're, we're four and zero at the moment, we're right. going okay. But uh, there's some. Uh, what I'm trying to build is I'm trying to build the team skill level, right? And I'm also trying to build a, a system where where no matter what happens, if one or two players have an off day, it doesn't matter because the rest of the team will continue on doing what we're doing. Right. And we're not relying on one or two people. So building depth. Yeah, building depth. We're not relying on one or two people. Everyone knows the system. So if right. one bloke's out, we just put the next bloke in and we just carry on with it. That's what we're try what I'm trying to build at the moment. Cool. And it's coming along quite nicely, but we've still got a few little, uh, obviously, no one's perfect. And, and we've got, to, um, got quite a few little kinks to iron out. That's it for this week's episode of I Know Jax. This week, you can get two things from me for free. First, you can get a pint of beer at Really Good Beer Stop. If you tell them that Joe at I Know Jax sent you and give them the password, Hazy IPA. That's the first freebie. Now, if you want to go and see the Jacksonville Axemen game at UNF, tell them that I Know Jax sent you and you won't have to pay for your ticket. And make sure to let me know if you go to either place, tag me or do whatever you do on Instagram and all those socials. I'll be back next week with a brand new show, but until then, I'll see you on the internet.